Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to review your code. Those of you that follow the channel know that a while back I asked for code submissions. Thank you so much for all of you that sent in your code. There were a lot of really great examples. And today I want to look at one and I plan to look at others in future videos. So thank you. <laughs> So today's goal is to look through some code and hopefully give you some pointers for making cleaner code that's easier to read and easier to maintain. And specifically today I want to talk about refactoring your code. But before we dive into code I want to talk about a few preliminaries. First, a story. A few weeks ago I was looking at some code with a student in office hours. During that conversation I made some recommendations. I noticed a few things about the code that affected readability and I suggested that the student make some upgrades. His response surprised me a little bit. He said, oh yeah, 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 no, I know. I'll get that fixed up before I submit it. Now I've heard this a lot in my career working with students and it concerns me and here's why. The reason that you wanna write clean, easy to maintain code is not for me. It's not for your boss, it's not for your coworkers, it's not for your friends, it's not for me, it's not for your professors. It's for you. All of these people will appreciate good clean code. It will help them be able to read your code and maintain your code and they will love you for it. But the main person that you're benefiting when you write good, clean, readable, maintainable code is you. You're the owner of that code. It's tied to you. Not only does it make you look good or bad depending on how clean it is, but later on you're going to need to upgrade it. You're going to need to add features. You're going to need to fix bugs. And the cleaner that code is, the easier it's going to be for you to make those changes. Second, this video is going to be a little more subjective than my other videos. A lot of this is my personal preference. There aren't going to be a lot of hard, fast rules, just things that I think make code look nicer. And you may disagree, and that's totally okay. I just hope going through this process and hearing some of my ideas are helpful to you as you go through your projects. So take from it what you will. Third, let's talk about terms. My focus today is on refactoring. A lot of people use this word incorrectly. What this means is to clean up code without changing its function. This means we're trying to improve quality, readability, maintainability, but we are not changing how it behaves. As soon as we start changing behavior, well, maybe at that point we're adding features or fixing bugs, but we're no longer refactoring. So one thing to keep in mind when you're refactoring, because we're trying to keep things the same, we're trying to make sure that our code changes don't break perfectly good working code, tests are super important. Every little tweak and change I make to this code is an opportunity for me to introduce a bug into this code. I might break the build, it may no longer compile, or I may unwittingly change the program in some way that seemed like the same to me but actually changes something important. So anytime you're changing code, and that's pretty much all the time, tests are super important. So let's look at the code. This code is a simple program written in C that prints out the full file paths of files in a directory or directories and all of its subdirectories, so it's recursive. It's 120 20 lines of code, two functions, it's written in C as I mentioned before, and the author has asked to remain anonymous. Now if I compile it and run it, well you can see what it does. It's pretty simple, it basically just goes through and prints out the files in this directory. And I can try it now on a few different directories, and this code actually looks pretty good. I chose this one because one, it's simple, two, it's pretty clean, and three, it has a lot of common style issues that I think we can talk about that aren't always obvious to beginners. So I'm compiling it with a simple make file that I made. For illustration purposes, I'm keeping the original version and the new version with my changes. Okay, so that way we can always look back after we're done and compare the before and after code. I've also included a way to test the program. This testing approach is really simple. Normally I would have test inputs and outputs and I might use a testing framework like Unity or Seedling, but in this case, I just decided to use the author's original version of the code to test my changes. So I'm basically assuming that the author's version is correct and, and comparing my changes to the author's version. It's not great, but it'll suffice for today. So to make this work, I wrote a simple Ruby script that runs the original version and the new version with whatever arguments I pass in and then if they match, it prints out that the test passed, and if it doesn't, it prints out that it failed. Okay, so then in my make file, you can see that I have a test target that runs this Ruby script with a bunch of different directory paths. And so these are my tests, and right now my lsa2.c, that's the source file, is just an exact copy of lsa.c. That was the code that was submitted, and now I can run the test, and you notice they all pass. So it just says they all matched, that's great. That gives us a baseline. As I mentioned before, so the benefit of having these tests is that anytime I change anything, now I can just type make test, I can rerun all the tests and make sure that I haven't broken anything. And that's really nice because otherwise without the tests, I'm just hoping I didn't break anything. And there's a lot of anxiety that comes with that. Every time you change code, you're just like, I think it still works, but you don't really know. You might've messed something up. This way we can be much more confident. So now let's really look at this code. So we have main, which grabs arguments to make sure that they're valid. And then for each directory that it wants to explore, 
it calls this explore function, passing in a pointer to the directory struct that was returned from opender, as well as the base directory path. And then down here below, the explore function goes through the directory by calling readdir over and over. When it finds a file, it prints out its path, and when it finds a subdirectory, it calls itself recursively on that subdirectory. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Now, the first thing that I notice here is the comments around the includes. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about this. On one hand, I like how this explains why each header file was included, which functions were coming from which. But I also think it clutters the code a bit, and I'm afraid that this comment will easily become out of date. I may call another function, I may remove one of these functions, and I may forget to update that comment. In fact, I don't personally trust myself to maintain these comments. And an out-of-date comment can be way worse than no comment at all. So I'm torn on this one, but I'm actually going to remove it. The next thing I notice is that all of the local variables in main are declared as static. Now, normally when I see a static local variable, I expect that this is a variable that needs to survive across multiple invocations of the function. But unless we're doing something really strange, main should only ever be called once. And that is the case here. So making them static is okay. Like it's not gonna break anything, but it's not necessary. And I find it a little confusing. So I'm gonna remove that. Okay, so let's add a space after the variables. I personally like having some space between variable declarations and the first statement that uses those variables. Again, not a hard rule, but I think it helps me mentally parse through the code. Without the new line, it all feels like it runs together and I might miss something. The next thing I notice in this code is that there is a lot of error checking code in a variety of places, and it's great that you're checking your return values. I love that. But this is getting a bit repetitive, and the handling code varies a bit, but it follows common patterns, and so I think it clutters up the code a bit. So I'm going to add a few macros to make our code more concise, because I really want to avoid repeating myself in my programs. So, so the first macro I'm going to add will just exit the program if any of these things fail. And the second prints out a specified error message and then exits the program. And this just allows me to keep the behavior the same since there seem to be two main failure modes. One is just exit the program and the other is exit with printing out some kind of error message. Okay, so now let's see if we can use them to tighten up the code. So first, let me point out these two error conditions have a commented out printf. It looks like an error message. This is one thing that you wanna keep an eye out for. Commented out code in your programs are common sources of confusion. When I come across this as a reader, I'm always trying to figure out what's going on here. Why is it commented out? Is it wanted in here, but the programmer just removed it for some reason while debugging? Was the programmer undecided? Why not just include it? In this case, I'm guessing that the programmer wanted a more helpful error message, but I just don't know why it's commented out. Maybe it's not supposed to produce these errors. Maybe there was too much output. Maybe the error messages were causing problems. I don't know why they're commented out. And that is the point. I don't know. So at this point, as a reader, I'm going to waste some time going through the code because I just, I'm trying to understand it and it's ambiguous. So most of the time, this kind of commented out code should be removed. And that's what I'm going to do here. But let's say you do have a situation where you desperately need to have code in there and you want it to be commented out. You just want to make sure that it is completely clear why it's commented out and what its future is. Is it eventually need to come back in? Is it a more readable version of the code below? Like, why is it here? Make sure that is really clear in your programs. Okay, so for now, as I mentioned before, I'm in refactoring mode, so I'm assuming that the program works just as intended. So I'm gonna remove them, and of course we can add new error messages as features later if we decide we want those features. So let's go through the code. I'm gonna go through the code and change the error checking to use my macros. And also keep in mind that I could have used functions instead of macros here, which would have some pros and cons, and that might actually be a good topic for a future video. But for now, I'm using macros. It is what it is. Okay, so this here is definitely a matter of taste. This null checking code up here is at the very top before any variables are declared. Personally, I prefer to have my local variables all declared at the top with space separating the variables and the statements below. Uh, so I'm gonna reorder them. The next thing I'm noticing is that opender is called twice in main, either with the current directory or the directories passed in as arguments. And then the directory structure is being passed to this explore function. But the explore function is the one that closes the directory, and personally, I find that a little confusing. I think it makes more sense to open the directory and close it within the same function. It sort of makes the function feel self-sufficient and self-contained. So instead, I'm going to change this to pass the directory name to the function, and then move the opender call into the explore function. And I can't forget to update the prototype up on top. Okay, so let's make sure it still builds. And it doesn't, okay, I forgot to update a few things. 
One thing that's nice about this change is that we're removing some code from main, but we're not adding much complexity to explore. So I like that. In general, having less code means fewer bugs and easier maintenance, especially if it's cleaner code. Okay, and we can't forget the recursive call to explore that, that explores the subdirectories, so we'll fix that. And we have an unused variable, let's remove that. And it compiles again, and now we can run it and our tests pass. Okay, great. Now, I want to make one minor tweak up here. Up here, the author checks to see if the argv array has less than two entries. I personally find it more natural to change this to checking for less than or equal to one. Now, that's a small thing, but the reason is, is that what we're really checking to see is if the program is called alone, which would be the one case, or whether there's arguments. And so those are really our two cases. And so for me, a one makes more sense than a two. It's a minor thing, but why not? Okay, now we compile it, run the tests, make sure it still works. Okay, now let's go back down to the explore function. Now, one thing I noticed when we were down here before is that dir scanner is misspelled. Again, this is a really minor thing, but at the very least, that's something that it's gonna distract me, so let's fix it. So let's just search and replace and make sure it still works. Search and replace can normally be a really scary thing to do because sometimes it changes your code in ways you didn't anticipate. So again, having our test comes in handy, we can make sure we didn't break it. Okay, now, now let's pull this comment back in line with the line it describes. And now this block of code here has been calling to me. Now let's see what we can do here. The first thing I notice is the register keyword, which this tells the compiler to keep the variable in a register. It's a hint, sometimes this can speed things up, but usually the compiler is pretty good about using registers effectively. I really doubt that's likely to help me here, but just to be sure, let's test it out so we can compile it with and without the keyword and we can time it and I'm really not seeing a meaningful difference, so I'm gonna take it out. Now, as I've been looking at this code, I think what's really bugging me about it is that it's adding complexity that doesn't need to be here. This code is basically just trying to avoid recursing on the dot and dot dot directories, because that would recurse infinitely, and this code right here is going to work just fine, but it could be a lot simpler. So I'm going to replace this with two calls to string compare, and this might be a tiny bit slower, probably not so much that anyone will notice, but it's so much neater this way, and I think it's more obvious to a reader what this section of code is doing that I think it's definitely worth it. And I think it's so clear now what it's doing that I'm thinking we probably don't even need this comment up here anymore. Okay, so let's make sure it still makes, okay, and it still passes our tests. Okay, now up until now, I have just been refactoring this code, meaning that I've been trying to preserve the behavior, keep it the same, but there are some things that have been bugging me about this program, and the main one is that the code is a bit messier than it could be because the program can really be used in a variety of ways. It's trying to do a lot of different things. You can run it without arguments, and that just implicitly uses the local directory as the argument, or you can pass in one or more directories as arguments. And it also seems odd to me that if it runs into a bad directory that doesn't exist, it just keeps going through the list. So all this flexibility actually makes the code quite a bit more complicated. So if I were designing this program as an actual tool that I was going to use, I think I would change its behavior a bit. A good rule of thumb to follow when you're designing software, or really anything, is to design a tool that does one thing well. Now, that's because it's much easier to do one specific thing well than it is to do a lot of things well. The more you try to do, there's always a cost. And in this case, the cost is more code and more complexity. And more complexity tends to lead to bugs and things that are harder to maintain and that costs you money. So I'm gonna make a copy of this program. I'm gonna leave the original in place. But so for behavioral changes, I'm going to work on a copy and I'm going to leave the original in place. In the interest of time, I'm not gonna update the make file and the test. If I were really working on this to keep around, that's the first thing I would do. But so in our copy, I'm gonna do a few things. First off, I'm gonna make it fail if you give it a bad directory. The user has a lot of ways to verify that directories exist. I just don't think I would wanna do that in this program. So I'm gonna push that responsibility back on them. So that gets rid of that continue and simplifies what happens at the end of the for loop here. And now, I can just exit if I survive the loop. Now I'm gonna get rid of this no argument option. Okay, now if you call it without arguments, it will politely explain how to use the program because really how hard is it to type another period? Okay, so let's compile it and, oh look, I forgot to remove a now unused variable. And now we get rid of it and now it builds successfully. And now if we run it without arguments, it corrects that behavior 
If we pass in a directory, it prints out the contents. And the main advantage here is that I now have a simpler program that's also about 10 lines of code shorter. Okay, now back to our original program. I wanna point out one more thing. There are some comments in here that I just don't find very helpful. Again, this is a matter of taste, but in my opinion, you only want comments that add information to the program. So this comment down here that says close the dir, that doesn't really tell us much that we don't get from the code. So I'm gonna remove it. So same goes with this free the path comment. It's pretty obvious what this code does. Some of these others are more informative, so I'm gonna leave them in. Okay, and this one up here about the base case. Now this one's okay, but I also think it's pretty self-explanatory. Again, personal preference, but I'm going to remove it. Okay, and then I'll keep going. Let's keep looking through. Yeah, there's a few more in here I wanna remove. So that looks pretty good. Okay, so and I think that's where I wanna stop on this code. I'm sure there's more we could do, but I think that looks pretty good at this point. We've been able to make some improvements and clean some things up. And I hope this is helpful to you to see how I would go through a piece of code, the things I would change, the things I wouldn't change. And of course you may also disagree with me and that's fine if you wanna disagree, you're welcome to be wrong, it's perfectly fine. But after watching this video, I hope you'll look differently at your code. I hope you'll take some time every once in a while to refactor it, to clean it up, to make it easier to read, easier to maintain, and easier to fix in the future. I also hope this helps you see the importance of tests when you are refactoring your code so that you can make changes without living in constant fear that you're breaking something. So that's it for today. I hope it's helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, please let me know if there's other topics you'd like me to cover on the channel. I appreciate all the comments that I do receive. If you wanna make sure you don't miss my next video, including the next code review video we do, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. And until the next video, I'll see you later.